Hello, this is Greg the Rural Economist, and this is Wild Edibles number 33. Though I have to be honest, this one's not really an edible as much as it is, as it is a medicinal. So, I actually get to skip the edible disclaimer and go right straight to the medicinal, but this one also has an additional disclaimer. I am not a herbalist or a doctor. I do not diagnose or treat any illness. We're here teaching you about stuff that's around you every single day. If you have a condition, seek out the assistance of a physician or an herbalist before you do anything. Disclaimer number two. There are a lot of wild herbs out there that can be uh, misused. This is one of those herbs. I'm telling you this for educational and entertainment purposes only. I do not endorse any recreational herbal or drug use. With that, let's talk about Indian Pink. Indian Pink is Latin name is Spigelia Marylandica. Maryland Ica. Spigelia Marylandica. Okay. Medical only. It's very distinctive. With the red flowers, the yellow. As this matures, it'll actually spread out and have more of a, a yellow flower. This one fell off premature, and I'm tearing it apart. This plant has no edible uses that we know of at all. None. Okay? Now, it does have some major medical benefits. It's been used for hundreds of years by the Native Americans as a way to dispel internal parasites from their body. The entire plant is used. It is used to make a tea which you drink and it has been proven to be highly effective against tapeworms and roundworms. Here's the big deal though. If you take it as, uh, if you eat it as Unexpellent, which is actually the way the Native Americans used it. It has to be immediately followed up by something that has a laxative effect That way it flushes the plant out along with the parasites if the plant stays in your body and absorbs into your gut It can kill you dead Now It's it's a beautiful plant Some people actually include it in a woodland type garden it's very difficult to propagate from cuttings very difficult it is not one that I would consider having in my garden but it is still a very important one it has a bunch of different names Indian pink Maryland pink uh, all of them include pink because it supposedly uh, if I can get it up no I couldn't get it up if you cut into the root, the root's actually pink. Well, no. But it's very distinctive. The, uh, the leaves have a central stem and then it branches off like a tree. Let's turn that around that way. It's right side up for you. It's very heavily veined, including small capillaries, everything like that. You can see the veins better from the outside this one everything that looks like it is toxic everything that looks like it is toxic this is something that you know if you're wanting to wind up being a certified herbalist you're gonna want to know if you are a wilderness survival person or a, or a, a survivalist or a prepper you're gonna want to know this one because if things go to pot then you're going to want to ha be able to have something that will uh, act as a, uh, to flush out parasites. Okay? This is Greg the Rural Economist. Oh, if you would like a PDF with all the information, good quality pictures, and all of that of this particular plant, uh, there will be a link below. We're going to start selling PDFs of individual plants, um, and we'll, you'll be able to create your own database at home and be able to take something with you and compare it right with you at all times. Step by step, we're bringing Rural back. Have a great day. Bye-bye.